Oh god, boys. The PNG tubers discovered Fallout. It's over! If you couldn't tell, I was being sarcastic there. Uh, so let's not get a bunch of hate in the comments, okay? Okay, with all the things surrounding Fallout right now, I think it's time to have a chat with the newer fanbase about the older fanbase. Fallout is a long-standing franchise with fans ranging from Zoomers to Boomers, each with their own taste of what Fallout is and what it should be going into the future. The new wave of fans coming into the from the show is a blessing and a curse, as it's caused some, I guess you could say, discourse over the last few weeks with the rising changes in taste between the new and older fans. I just wanted to add my two cents to this, as it seems like most people are getting lost in the sauce and claiming one game is better than another, or acting like old fans' gripes with the games is invalid, which I really don't like. Well, this is a response to two specific videos I have seen, let's not go down the path some others have chosen with this narrative. <laughs> it, at least in the past. Fallout New Vegas is a game with a fan base unlike any other, and this is coming from a rampant Halo fan who's taken the time to read around 35 of the 39 Halo novels, at least currently as the time of this recording. The game came out to moderately good praise back in October of 2010, and by 2014 it was revered as the peak of the franchise. This grew the fan base to be ever more hyped about Bethesda's next title, which was announced at E3 2014, roughly two and a half years after Skyrim took the world by storm in the RPG space. I would be lying to you if I said I wasn't absolutely jazzed about the game's reveal. I remember specifically waking up early with a hangover just to watch the presentation for it. Seeing Todd in all of his glory, at what I remember was like 10 in the morning and being immediately like losing my hangover. And at the moment this man stepped on stage, I think like everyone else watching that presentation, my mind was blown. And then I subsequently remember getting a traffic ticket the day the game came out on the way to GameStop to pay off my midnight reserved copy. And I wish I was kidding. And for my first playthrough, I was enamored with the game. The graphics, the gameplay, everything had me feeling content. But as I approached the 45-ish hour mark, I had realized I was scarcely running low on anything to do. This was unusual because my unguided playthroughs of New Vegas felt a little bit more fulfilling by this time, and this would usually near the end of it, because, I mean, at this point in in any time i had already known what to do whenever i played new vegas so it just felt natural to me and it was really weird that fallout 4 in my first playthrough with zero guides took me about as much time as it took me to 100 percent fallout new vegas in terms of gameplay and content this was doing absolutely everything that i could find and get my hands on and i wasn't the only one who felt this way as time would tell, countless videos would be made about Fallout 4 and its subsequent shortcomings compared to Fallout 3 in New Vegas. This led to a period in time where the only things really talked about in Fallout 4 were what people didn't like, with very little in the way of what people did actually like in the game besides minor things and just talking about like gameplay, gunplay, etc. Which definitely caused a big disconnect between fans of the older titles and those that preferred the new ones. And you saw a rise recently with people like Schizo, Schizo Elijah, and it definitely didn't help with that, of course. Though, wherever he is now, I genuinely hope his life is going in a good direction. He quit YouTube recently because of the toxic nature of his channel and is working on himself, which can only be a good thing. And I genuinely hope he comes back to the fan base with a more positive outlook. Now, I'd be lying if I said I never found his videos to be funny, nor ever watched one with a shit-eating grin on my face while he talked shit about the Bethesda games. However, with the new era of Fallout and the fandom surrounding it, I think it's time to have a more realistic talk about the game and dial back the snarky remarks in favor of a more objective reason why Fallout New Vegas and some of the Fallout 3 fans really look at this game with disdain. Fallout 4 was a new breath for the franchise, and it changed quite a bit. While you can't expect a franchise to remain the same forever, you need to realize older fans are going to expect elements that made the series so iconic to remain in the franchise. Fallout 4's overarching story was a massive downgrade in every way and was every shape and form worse than New Vegas 1 and 2. 
there really isn't any arguing this. Everything from the dialed down dialogue tree and voice protagonists, which has been beaten to death, so we won't really go too far into it, to the similar questing of the main core factions, which yes, New Vegas had this in regards to things like the cons and the boomers, but differentiates itself with the faction's side quests in later quests such as Arizona Killer. As well as offering many branching paths throughout each of these quests, Fallout 4 really had a lackluster story behind each faction and their goals, and has a similar syndrome to New Vegas where one faction definitely got way more love than the others, but in my opinion, on a much larger scale. People of the Commonwealth, do not interfere. Okay. Grass grows, birds fly, sun shines, and brother, I hurt people. Boink! I'm a force of nature. Boom! If you were from where I was from, you'd be fing dead. Stop right there. You went through a lot of effort to arrange this meeting. But before we go any further, answer my question. Yo, what's up? Who Fallout 4's story did initially start off fairly strong, but very quickly delves into fetch quests for whichever faction you choose to represent. The story going up to this point had been some really cool detective and other kinds of like it, like inspection vibes, I guess you could say, which are sorely missed once it gets into the preparation phase of the story. The game's main story feels very linear, and while New Vegas also is fairly linear once you look at it and like dismantle it into brass tacks, and once you figure out which faction you're siding with, it gets doubly so. But it does a much better job of hiding this and making the player feel like there's always more options and new paths to be discovered. The agency aspect in New Vegas is unparalleled. You can approach every faction differently, such as a staunch supporter or just some asshole who thinks that they're the lesser evil. With Fallout 4, each faction has a very you're with us or against us type feel which results in the sole survivor always feeling like they're 100% on board with whatever faction the player chooses. Very limited arguments can be brought up that actually change how the faction can operate or how they perceive you, and it's impossible to be reserved in whatever faction you side with. Whereas New Vegas will constantly have the player second guessing which faction is the right choice for the wasteland, in Fallout 4, I believe that the game railroads you, no pun intended, into siding with the Brotherhood of Steel, as they're the only real faction with realistic goals and ideals with a well thought out plan for the Commonwealth afterwards, whereas the Minutemen and Railroad feel more like militias with no real goals outside of just surviving the encounter with the Institute. And of course, the Institute is just comedically evil with Sean doing everything in his power to make himself seem like an asshole that would sooner burn the world than ever make an attempt to help it or fix the problem to move mankind forward. Whenever you question him about why he does what he does, it simply boils down to, we kill people because we're the only hope for humanity. And then you ask him how. How? 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 I don't know. I don't know. And he just gives some hypocritical speech stating that they care about humanity, but also that only they can create a future for it followed by some random story choice that makes Sean believe that pursuing cyborg technology for Kellogg was okay, but that it is also a bastardization of science, but somehow creating synthetic humans with every emotion and spectrum of feelings isn't the same thing. Which all culminates to the endings, which are all extremely abrupt and ultimately unsatisfying. With little to no closure on what happened to the people you've helped and the stories you've altered throughout your playthrough. This is where New Vegas outshines the competition, while being relatively simple. New Vegas ending slides give you closure and answers to the questions you might have. It makes you feel like you made your mark on the world and that your interactions, choices, and decisions all had a greater purpose. It feels fulfilling and gives you closure on why you mattered. This being followed by the themes in each of the DLCs hits very hard. 
Each one is a story that takes an introspective look at you, your motivations, and the overarching themes that one person with the determination and willpower to move forward has the power to tip the scales. That one person can become a beacon of hope and inspire others to stand up and act. Going through complex topics such as religion, the power of nostalgia and its grip on each of your lives and its potential to keep you from acting in your own best interests, how acting without knowledge of why you act or who you can act for can lead to devastating results. Knowing the banner you carry in life has untold and numerous effects on those around you. All of this culminates with the story and the outcomes of the game, which I and many others felt lacking in Fallout 4. Fallout wasn't simply enjoyed because of the gameplay. It was enjoyed because it explored complex themes and characters in an extremely entertaining way. With flashy things like bloody mess, vats, and interesting weapons that made the otherwise lackluster gameplay very fun and unique. The story was the ultimate draw. This and everything from terminals, holotapes, NPCs, and just general world building. These are things that New Vegas excels at, but become an afterthought in Fallout 4. To many of us, New Vegas feels like the world was built first and the game was built second. Whereas Fallout 4 really felt like the game was built first and the story was made as an afterthought. Which is why gameplay wise, Fallout 4 excels in nearly every factor. From its excellent exploration to fun and fluid combat, the gameplay and gameplay loop of Fallout 4 is superior to New Vegas in every way, shape, and form. I don't think any New Vegas fan can even begin to argue that. If it was worse, I don't think there would be one of the biggest modding teams in probably video game history working to rebuild Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4's engine. But Fallout fans up to that point never really played these games purely for the gameplay, and many felt slighted because of this, myself included. Because to me, what's a Fallout story if it's an ocean wide but an inch deep? Fallout 3 gets a pass from me and many others because it was Bethesda's first Fallout game, and essentially the game's first real step into the 3D space. No, we are not counting you. Fuck you. Could you guys imagine how fucking cool this game would have been on the Dark Alliance engine, by the way? Like seriously, imagine this gameplay but in the world of Fallout 1 or 2 with similar quest structure and dialogue. So much wasted potential. Anyway, I think people expected the story depth of New Vegas but on the new generation engine, which resulted in years of sour videos and fans beating down on the game. Moving on to companions, I believe it really is no contest. In Fallout 4, most of the companions are very fun and campy, which isn't a bad thing. They were the same way in Fallout New Vegas. I just think they achieved this feeling in a much different way while still maintaining their serious nature. Each companion tackles different levels of emotional depth from mental illness and coping with the world around them. Each one is extremely deep and intriguing, while in Fallout 4, only two of them really ever reach the same level of depth as the New Vegas companions, that being Nick Valentine and McCready. Each one is usually a specific character design and archetype that doesn't evolve much throughout their quest, and I'm referring to all of them at this point, not Nick Valentine and McCready. I think that Kate is a very close contender to McCready, but her story just didn't really wow me and came off as pretty shallow. Kate as a companion is infinitely more interesting than her backstory. Strong being my least favorite as he doesn't really t ever touch on the idea that genes and DNA don't define a person like Fox or Lily. He is still very much just a stupid mutant that exists to be the token super mutant companion. Lily is probably my second favorite companion in New Vegas, and she is the prime example of how to write a super mutant character in Fallout. The idea behind violent killing machines and having some layer of humanity and it being done so well is just, it's just a chef's kiss. It reminds us that most super mutants never had a choice to become super mutants. The idea of them being a master race of killing machines was essentially implanted by someone who forced them to be that way rather than it being a choice made by their own free will. Nick Valentine's emotional depth and themes of being more than just a, miscreen, a machine scratch all of these itches, however, and show that Bethesda has the capability to write on par or maybe even better than whatever New Vegas achieved, which again piles on to why so many people were disappointed with Fallout 4. 
These complaints can also be mirrored to the DLCs, whereas each one in New Vegas tackled really sensitive issues and concepts ranging from imperialism and cultural genocide, which is a harsh comparison going to more wacky and zany things like Nuka World. Also, I have to say it, the building-focused DLCs were super disappointing. I love my girl Ada. I could not believe they chose Automaton to be the first DLC, though. I remember loading that pitch up on launch, beating the story in under an hour, and being left with this robot system that was fleshed out, but also left me feeling like... This we paid $9 for this? I paid 10 This DLC ended up being a worse version of Gunrunner's Arsenal somehow. And it was priced the same as Fallout 3 DLCs, which were roughly 8 to 1200 Microsoft points from memory, which averaged around 10 USD, which I believe that's what Automaton was originally priced at, or it was around $8. Going on to the RPG aspects, I think when people say Fallout 4 isn't an RPG, it's just a facetious way to get people riled up, as so many people on the internet love to do. But I think this can be looked at somewhat deeper and acknowledge that New Vegas and Fallout 4 are two completely different kinds of RPGs. Fallout New Vegas is a quest focused RPG with a focus on your builds changing, how you can interact with the world and perform in quests, re revealing more story. Giving many different dialogue options depending on your skills that can either result in something hilarious, finishing a quest quicker, or steering the quest in favor of the faction you sided with, giving them a potential to impact on the final ending slides or your allies during the Battle of Hoover Dam. Or they might just turn into a simple fetch quest or turn a simple fetch quest into the courier siding with some bank robbers using an innocent girl as a patsy. With Fallout 4, its RPG mechanics are focused solely on gameplay aspects ranging from combat effectiveness to navigation and exploration. The voice protagonist and speech tree makes the games more reminiscent of Mass Effect's dialogue wheel instead of previous games, leading to a more linear feeling as I mentioned earlier. These mechanics also feel somewhat shallow for builds, as by level 30 or 40, you can really just become a jack of all trades and just use whatever you want to near full combat effectiveness. In most of my recent playthroughs of Fallout 4, which was about last year, I started out trying to do like a Chinese infiltrator build, only for the game to kind of level out by the time I finished a good chunk of the side quest and moved on to the main story. By the time I was building the Institute Relay with the Brotherhood, I could use whatever I wanted and gain nearly full combat effectiveness with whatever, whatever weapons I could find, and this was around level 45. Whereas in New Vegas, you don't really have that ability to just pick up whatever weapon you want and use it to its full potential until the late level 30s, which is usually attained after beating most of the side content and usually one of the four DLCs. While builds are very fun in Fallout 4, they become obsolete much quicker and usually devolve into just using the most powerful thing you can acquire by that point. The main point here is that New Vegas builds are far more impactful for much longer durations of the game. And while this change is fine, and I understand that people want to dabble in, with everything in the game, I think this change really hampers some of the hardcore aspects of the game. One thing I see a lot of these videos saying is that Fallout New Vegas aged like milk. Being of Gen Z myself, so I can kind of relate to the Zoomers, I'm on the ass end of it, but still technically Gen Z, I feel like the implication that Fallout New Vegas age like milk is just wrong. Maybe it's because I've been playing it since launch, but I think New Vegas has aged just fine when compared to other games released in 2010. Especially for running on an engine that started production in the late 1990s, seeing its full initial release in 1997. This engine is the same age as me, yet the game still has the stylized feel that I believe made Fallout 3 and New Vegas timeless. Everything from aesthetics to the art style make the games feel like they're in their own tier. While character models have their jank, I think Fallout 4 also shares this problem, but instead of being wax horror figures, they just look like they're made of plastic. Bethesda's engines have never made appealing humanoid models, it's just always been like that. In Skyrim, every single person looks like the Giga Chad meme. They're more so in the category of serviceable than being 
excellent. I mean, look at Starfield and you'll see what I'm talking about. But where the models lack detail, they usually make up for it with these iconic armors and clothing designs that are all instantly identifiable. And regarding crashes on PC, you can now install mod setups on Nexus Vortex with preset profiles that take very little mod knowledge to run and fix almost every issue you might have with this game, ranging from 600 mod setups that make like a whole next gen experience to more basic 40 mod setups that add things like Fallout 4 style looting, crosshairs, and sprint while making the game more stable. Also, my hot take for New Vegas, Vortex has surpassed Mod Organizer 2 tenfold. In terms of Fallout New Vegas modding, it makes it simple and easy with way better load order automation and simple UI to fix any issues you might be having when it comes to your mod load orders. Also, the console versions of the game still run just fine. You can boot up Fallout New Vegas and have z pretty much zero issues if you're an Xbox player, branching from Xbox One to Series X. I mean, obviously you can still play it on your 360 if you still have that too. They even re-released the game so you can buy physical copies of the Ultimate Edition for Xbox One which to my knowledge worked just fine on the Xbox series consoles. So this was meant to be a quick and dirty look into the recent discussions around the Fallout games and give some more insights on why Fallout New Vegas brains like myself love New Vegas and still hold some level of contempt for Fallout 4. Liking Fallout 4 isn't a problem and any New Vegas player that tells you they hate the game itself or they'll never play it is likely lying or trying to get a rise out of you. Like most fans who fell in love with this game in 2007 and 2008, Fallout 4 is an excellent game that leaves many of us wondering what if. Liking Fallout 4 is not a problem, and if you do, I encourage you and everyone else to keep playing the game you love. But it's important to understand why many of the diehard Fallout fans have feelings about Fallout 4 that they do. And before getting into the fan base, if you are introduced to the series by Fallout 4, these issues won't exist for you. And unfortunately, many of the Fallout fans that lean towards New Vegas are just used to dunking on the game because, well, that's just what the fan base has been doing for a better part of a decade. Don't let it discourage you or make you feel like you have to lean one way or another. Just understand that for many Fallout fans, 4 was this fan base's version of Halo 5 or Gears of War 4, where many of the core gameplay concepts were improved upon. The narrative differences and changes in style and aesthetics did turn a lot of people away from the game. So yeah, it's completely fine if you do dislike Fallout 4. Well, I don't dislike it. I still have my problems and criticisms of it and only want to see more story elements and branching paths similar to New Vegas added to the games in the future such as Fallout 5. All while keeping Fallout 4's intuitive gameplay loop and resource collection that made it one of the best games released on the 9th gen consoles.